Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I had been seeing all the pictures of New York City's crazy orange skies, as I'm sure all of you have, and I saw that someone online made this comment saying that this is what New York City would look like on Venus. And my nerd brain thought, no, this is what New York City would look like on Mercury, because Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. But then after some Googling, I found out that Venus is way way hotter than Mercury, despite Venus being twice as far away from the sun as Mercury. So I ended up going down a whole bunch of internet rabbit holes about Venus and suddenly it was two o'clock in the morning and then I was like, screw it. I'm making a video about this, <laughs> not, not letting my insomnia go to waste. And I figured since I had previously made a video about chilly Neptune and her surprising rings, that I would go to the other side of the spectrum. We only cover super cold or super hot planets on this channel, so sorry, Earth, you're boring. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into it. So we all know that Earth is the third rock from the sun, and the first and second spots are taken by Mercury and Venus, respectively. Mercury is about 58 million kilometers from the sun, and Venus is about 108 million kilometers from the sun, according to JPL. Yet Venus is way, way hotter. It has an average temperature of 867 degrees Fahrenheit, while Mercury's average is 333 degrees. And while yes, they are both scorchers for sure, that's a pretty big difference considering Mercury is so much closer. So what's the deal with that? Well, it all comes down to atmosphere. And while I was going down my internet rabbit holes, I found out that NASA actually does this series called We Asked a Scientist. And in this very short clip, they explain how atmosphere makes Venus so much hotter than Mercury. Well, let's start with what we know, the Earth. So the Earth's average surface temperature is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius. Our atmospheric composition is about 78% nitrogen, 20-ish percent oxygen, and then about less than 1% of a whole bunch of other gases. But Venus's atmosphere isn't like Earth's. We know that on Earth, carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas. So light from the sun passes through the Earth's atmosphere, but CO2 absorbs some of the heat that would otherwise have escaped back into space. And it traps that heat against the Earth, causing the Earth's surface to be warmer than it would otherwise have been in the absence of CO2. Now imagine that same process happening on Venus, a place with over 2,000 times as much CO2 in the atmosphere and a lot closer to the sun. And it's no wonder that Venus's actual average surface temperature is a blistering 870 degrees Fahrenheit, about 465 degrees Celsius. So Venus, really, really hot. And why is it so hot? Much closer to the sun, massive greenhouse effect. So basically Venus having so much more CO2 in its atmosphere compared to Earth and it being way, way closer to the sun causes heat to be trapped on the planet's surface, making it super, super toasty. On the other hand, Mercury, while also being super toasty, doesn't have an atmosphere. It has a thin exosphere made up of atoms blasted off the surface by the solar wind and striking meteoroids. Mercury's exosphere is composed mostly of oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium. So since Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, its heat is conducted back into space. It doesn't hold on to it. So it gets hot, it just doesn't stay hot due to the different makeup of the planets. Also, when it comes to the look of the planets, Venus does have more of a June 2023 New York vibe. Mercury basically looks like our moon, while Venus, again, due to the high CO2 in the atmosphere, has this rusty orange color and actually has a ton of volcanoes on the surface. So yeah, whoever made that comment was actually pretty spot on. But have we ever actually been to Venus or given it a flyby? This was my question at one o'clock in the morning. I mean, it seems like going to Venus would be pretty hard since its surface is hot enough to melt lead, but actually more than 40 spacecraft have launched for Venus. One spacecraft, Japan's Akatsuki, is currently in orbit around Venus, and NASA's Mariner 2 in 1962 was the first spacecraft to visit any planet beyond Earth when it flew past Venus. 
data gathered in its 42-minute scan forever changed how we see Venus and revealed it as the runaway global hothouse it is today. Exploring the surface of Venus is difficult because of the intense heat and the crushing air pressure, but a spacecraft has actually landed on Venus's surface. This spacecraft was the Soviet Union's Venera 13 probe in 1981, and it lasted a little over two hours on the surface. Which I find massively impressive. Landing a spacecraft in the early 80s on a planet's surface that's over 800 degrees? What? You guys. Also, RIP Venera. But we're going back. Oh yes, in 2021, NASA announced a mission called Da Vinci, which stands for Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigations of Noble Gases, Chemistry, and Imaging. Yes. As a planned mission for an orbiter and atmospheric probe to the planet Venus. Together with the Veritas mission, which will also study Venus, it was selected to be part of the Discovery Program. Da Vinci will send both an orbiter and a descent probe to Venus. The orbiter will image Venus in multiple wavelengths from above, while the descent probe will study the chemical composition of Venus's atmosphere and take photographs during descent. The Da Vinci probe will travel through the Venusian atmosphere, sampling the atmosphere and returning measurements down to the surface. These measurements are important to understanding the origin of the atmosphere, how it evolved, and how and why it is different from the atmosphere of Earth and Mars. Before it reaches the surface, the Da Vinci probe will capture high-resolution images of the planet's terrain, returning the first images of the planet's surface since the Venera. And of course, NASA be NASA, they made a full-blown movie trailer about this mission. It's super dramatic. <laughs> it feels like a little bit of Danny Boyle's sunshine with like a little bit of Marvel thrown in. And I loved every part of it. tuned. <laughs> oh, NASA, I adore you so. But yes, by stay tuned, they mean give it a few years. The launch for Da Vinci seems to be scheduled for sometime between 2029 and 2031. So yeah, it'll be a bit. But much like the images from James Webb, the photos of Venus's surface are gonna be awesome. There are craters and volcanoes and mountains and like big lava plains. It sounds really epic over there. Okay, that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for indulging me, letting me share my late night internet rabbit holes with you guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did, did you guys even know that a spacecraft had landed on Venus? I mean, that's the kind of thing you read about. And you go, what? And then you just keep looking and looking and looking. And then all of a sudden it's daylight outside. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.